Hi, everyone. This is Catching Up with the Nerds with your hosts, Tom and JC. This is a podcast about two dads that are catching up on all the nerdy stuff we missed, sharing how we pass on our nerdy passions to our kids and deep dive into nerdy pop culture to make it more accessible for you, our listener. I'm one half of your podcast host. This is uh, Juan Carlos Caray, but everybody calls me JC. Uh, I am currently in Portland, but I'm originally from Honduras. Uh, before living in Portland, I was living in London where I met Tom. And before that, in the States, and before that, I was uh, originally from Honduras, as mentioned. And I've got two lovely kids, uh, an 11-year-old named Aiden, a five-year-old named Arabelle, and I'm married to an amazing woman called Fiorella. Uh, We all call her Fio. Uh, And uh, I am very much into graphic novels. That's kind of been my bag. And I love video games and movies and series and all all things nerdy. And I love to talk about it with Tom. Excellent. I am Tom Arnold. I'm the other half of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> originally from France, as you can hear, uh, a thick accent coming through the microphone. Uh, moved to the UK about 20 years ago, which is where we met. Uh, not that long ago, about 10 years ago, I think, something like that. Um, what else? I've got two lovely kids also. Uh, Emily, 11, who's the same age as Aiden, make the connection there. And Louis, who's almost four. Uh, I'm married to Elizabeth, who is uh, also named Liz. <laughs> I like the queen. Um, what else do I have? Who is also lovely, uh, as she'll be listening to this. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm very much into video games, uh, retro gaming, all new, whatever. You know, I play everything. Uh, I love comics, movies, the Marvel Universe, Batman. That's me. Um, and a little bit of anime stuff. Hey everyone, this is part two of the five-part PlayStation miniseries. Today we're talking about the PlayStation 2 launch and everything that happened around that time. Uh, Enjoy. PS2 becomes the dominant Sony console from 2000 to 2005. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going through a time where we're going through the dot-com bust. So that definitely has an impact in the gaming industry of like so many companies going going, uh, under from the original uh, dot-com bubble. Uh, We get 9-11 and we also have like social media is all of a sudden a thing, right? We're in the early days of like High Five um, and Friendster and, 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 possibly maybe even like early days of Facebook. Um, and then uh, also uh, Apple becomes mainstream. Yeah. Yep. All of a sudden like Apple, like Apple wasn't like the, like the artsy nerdy kids computer, but it was someone that everybody wanted. And they came out with those really colorful console, uh, colorful uh, desktops. And uh, all of a sudden, like it's in everyone's consciousness, Apple becomes a thing, which eventually has an impact on gaming down the line. Yeah. But um Moving on to kind of the, the PS2, uh, one of the things about the PS2 that I, that I found interesting from what you told me earlier is that it had one of the largest library of games. Um, uh, so why is that? Like what, what made this console so have such a wide library? I mean, you, you could argue that the, the reason why it's got so many games is that it's, it's pretty simply, it's the, the, the highest selling console of all time with over 155 million units sold, right? Oh, right. It's just it's just the highest console, the highest selling console, highest, the highest, the highest <laughs> selling console of all time. So it, you could argue, and it was super easy to um, again um, develop on um, the architecture of the console made it so, and it, the graphics. There was a massive jump in graphics, and and the look of the graphics is just mind blowing to people to go from PS one to PS two. You can see the the the, the leap there. Um, so I think all of these sort of contributed to why there was so many games released you know i think the primary reason is obviously that yeah <laughs> the more consoles you sell the more people are going to win, are going to want to jump on that on that train wagon you know and trying to move their their own ip i like yeah. that word um <laughs> their, their own games move to the, the you know their game onto that and then also um you have to look at the competition uh for that generation yes. The Dreamcast, the GameCube, and the Xbox. So the Dreamcast is the last home console from Sega. That didn't do well. 
uh, or as well as you should have done. It's a great console, very powerful too, but just didn't have the legs. I think Sega was already checked out at that point. <clears throat> and um, so as a game developer, would you go to Sega knowing that's the last, you know, the last few months of a console? Are you going to spend time and money for something that's not sold as well? And you know your games are not going to, you know, yeah, sell as good. Um, GameCube's the same. GameCube at the time, Nintendo was very much um, concentrating on releasing their own games, so they wouldn't really they they only just very recently opened up the gates to third party developers to come in and release games on their consoles. And at the time, uh, the GameCube just moved to disc based gaming also, um, and it was super hard to super hard to develop unless you're Nintendo and you know your console inside out. So I wouldn't say. And it didn't well. It didn't sell well either. The GameCube it was sort of it was super cheap to buy. I remember. I think it was it was about a hundred dollars when it yeah. came out, but it just didn't have enough yeah. good games on it at the time of release. Um, and I don't think the marketing was good enough also for people to see the GameCube brand out there. Uh, and you have to you have to also put your cast your mind back to that period where. Um, do you remember in the 80s, well, 90s, when people like your mom would call you and say, Are you playing Nintendo even though you're on your Sega Mega Drive? <laughs> gaming, was, yeah. gaming was Nintendo at the time. No, like yeah. your moms would go, Are you playing your Nintendo? They, yeah. By that, they meant, Oh, you're playing video games. 2000, moms would go, Hey, are you playing your PlayStation? Video games was PlayStation. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't your branding would have to be super strong and your marketing team would have to be super creative to exist in that, in, in sort of the mind of the moms that would spend their money on the console. Um, True. And then Xbox launched also then. Um, and thanks to Microsoft having a whole bunch of cash, uh, managed to survive up until now because the first, the original Xbox uh, sell, sold okay, uh, but was also lacking... Um, like exclusive games apart from halo which is the reason why i got an xbox as well um so yeah that's why we got so many games on playstation 2 um all right yeah. so hearing you say that like i was interested in the and in, in how we got all those games but it made me think of something else so here's here, here's my hot take yeah, for this one uh so is nintendo kind of like the marvel of video games and PlayStation is like the DC. So let me explain that. So Nintendo seems to be protecting their brand really well. Like yeah. they do a lot of brand management um, to make sure that, of course, like uh, we we're talking about earlier, like Mario is always going to be the star of any Nintendo console, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what, right? And and it really isn't about, it's not about the the attracting game developers to use the console to build bigger and better games. It's about attracting game developers to tell more Mario stories, to tell more Zelda stories, yeah. to tell more Luigi stories or whatever it may be. Uh, and really is about characters, right? Which we got with Marvel. It was really like, it was our, our affinity to Iron Man and Captain America that really kind of kept us engaged with Marvel. Uh, but whereas PlayStation seems to be like, we're making a, a, a kick-ass console come and have fun with our toys and tell the stories you want to tell. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's where DC is going now, where it's like, sure. yeah, don't worry about the continuity. It's like, come and tell a <laughs> story. Uh, we'll let you play with our toys. So I, I'm curious, like... It, it, uh, to some extent, to some yeah. extent, I agree, um, especially with the Nintendo Marvel thing. It's like, do you remember this, the, the, the first sort of, era of um marvel movies like x-men and fantastic yeah. four yeah they totally. suck right? they totally sucked <laughs> so that sort of coincides with what nintendo did with the gamecube i don't say i'm not saying that the gamecube sucked but it, there, there was uh, definitely a time where N nintendo as a brand had a bit uh, of the, had a massive dip after the super nintendo in in terms of image in terms of um sales you know, they, yeah. they, they just almost disappeared. Um, and they came back with the Wii and like the Wii is Iron Man. Like suddenly it's yeah. cool again. Bang. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> phase one. <laughs> yeah. Phase one. Here's the Iron Man of console. You can play whatever you want on it. There's a bunch of third game, uh, third party games that are getting released on it. 
It's amazing. Wait, wait so um, are you saying that the Wii is the is the recovered alcoholic of yes. consoles? Yes. <laughs> yes. Have you played Wii recently? It's horrible. <laughs> okay. it, it is really bad, actually. It's, the, it's, it's a despicable console. I do not like it. I have one. Uh, just the controls, the controllers and everything. Just, oh, it's, it, it puts a massive, um, <laughs> almost an iron curtain in, between me and that console. I cannot, I cannot play. Um, but yeah, no, I, you, I think you've got a point. To, to a certain extent, yes. Yes, they could be that. You know, it's like, and the PlayStation is Batman. Yes, exactly cool it's dark it doesn't have to yeah. do much to be cool yeah um all the cool kids are going to it and they, you know that's yeah yeah I, I i would agree i would agree to a certain extent yes you're right okay <laughs> let, let let that be uh uh podcast canon now that we believe right. this is Damn the case right. Damn right. all right so uh but to your point talking about games um the games that came out during the PlayStation 2 run, I think that there's a kind of a lot of interesting ones we could talk about, but one in particular that I I remember vividly because less the game, because I think I only played it like a few times, but more the idea of the game was Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Uh, so when GTA came out, I remember that it was kind of like one of your friends having access to something they really shouldn't have had access to. Um, and it was kind of... Yeah, it was like the naughty game to have where you're like, oh, you're allowed to do all these really bad things in that game, but no one, like this is my friends, like no one had it. Like it, yeah. you couldn't get it easily. Officially, then, officially. Yeah, officially. And then you had a friend that had it and like everybody would show up to their house to play and you could barely even play it because it was like seven kids piled around the video game yeah. trying to play for like 30 seconds. But we were just all fascinated with with the idea of it. And if you look at now, those early Grand Theft Auto games were not very good to look at no. uh, but but the notion they were fun it, though they were fun. exactly it was so novel yeah so mm. what was your experience with with grand theft so auto the, the the funny thing is that back in those days but the ps2 um, era is kind of when i dropped out of video gaming a little bit just a little yep. bit so i wasn't yep. massively into the playstation 2 i, I um, own the next box i don't know why um but i GTA 3, I think, and Vice City, I think the, the yeah. other ones that came out around that time. Yes. They, again, again, I had an Xbox and I was playing Halo only, I think, and Pro Evo Soccer at uh, that time. But yep. GTA, yes, is the, is the time where you're like, what's, you know, what's this? It sounds bad, you know? And then the first, the first, it wasn't the same for me when I, I didn't have any friends. Well, I had friends who owned it, but it wasn't like, um, uh, what's the word for it? I, th I don't think it was seen as this horrible experience. I think it was more through through the media. I remember um, hearing about it a lot more on TV and in the newspapers, where it was like, "This game's horrible. You can go and shoot up prostitutes, and you can steal people's money, and you can beat people up and stuff." And I was like, oh, "Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool game. You know, it's it's a lot more mature than what we got on, up until now in in gaming, right? Because you, yeah. you used about you used to play Mario, you used to play um, platformers yeah. that are kids friendly. It was like um, save the princess. Yeah, save the princess. And this is <laughs> this is very serious. You know, you you're now driving around the city and you you're being chased by by cops and you you can kill them if you want to. Um, you can kill anyone, you yeah. know. Um, and it's it's." so what i'm trying to say is that it's um i didn't feel the same in terms of naughtiness i knew it was a bit woo edgy yeah. at the time but also i think it's when the gaming um well the players so their audience was growing up so the, you're 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 talking about people that are now maybe 16 17 18 yeah i grew up with the the, the the nes this the That's SNES a good point. and the mega drive so that kind of game is expected to be there because it's you you want more mature content and the graphics allow you to show those that content um in more details if you will um so it, it was sort of uh i think i think where were you at that time were you in the u.s yeah i was in the u.s so but... i think that's for maybe there's a cultural difference between what's acceptable for you guys in the u.s and what's acceptable for us in france where we're a lot more liberal with you know topics like sex sexuality um not violence so much but like you know you can go for us you can go on live on tv and swear until yeah. your face turns blue right like in the us i remember we used to watch tv and we used to have um, guests from america guests from america you know and 
can I swear? And then people are like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, just say whatever you want. You know, nobody cares. Um, so they, you know, the, in in certain to certain respect, like a game like GTA wasn't as much of a a shock to the system to the French society because it's, it's back in those days also and socially there was there was all these stories about uh-huh. um, cops shoot. I think we we talked about it once, but it's like cops shooting you know um, um, black kids and um, immigrants from North North Africa, you know, like Algeria and stuff like that. So it's like it's yeah. there was already a, a lot of violence in the media and the, and it was that was talked about already. So it wasn't a big of a big shock uh, to me at least uh, from what yeah. i remember those times th- in those days that oh look there's a video game people were well aware that it's just a video game you know it's like yeah. nobody's you don't really you won't do that in real life so it, i don't think it was a massive shocker to the system to anyone <laughs> when that came well out. well no but it's a, because this is prime like this is uh, this is happening post the time when Mortal Kombat comes out, which basically yeah. gets the rating onto games to like to, to define them as mature and all that sort of stuff. So the next game after Mortal Kombat that I can remember that that really gets into the media from that same perspective as Mortal Kombat was Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Like I remember, like I think it was one of it was discussed in Congress and all these things. And and yeah, I agree. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that here in the in the US, I agree. It's like because there's so many limitations around like you won't drink before this age, like the the da da da, like all these limitations of things that, that kids can and can't do. Uh it it really kind of like helped them to launch the game. Like that's the best PR they could have ever oh, yeah. gotten for that game, uh, without the, a doubt. The, we we had the same thing with Mortal Kombat, where I think that was was a lot more um trickier to to i don't know how to explain it but i remember when it came out it was a lot more shocking to people that you could especially on the mega drive which was supposed to be this kids friend well not kids friendly it was the edgy again the, the cool kids console um but it's that it, up until now you had 2d sprites when it's like a colorful game and you know again platformers and then there you go street fighters is a it's a fighting game it's cool you know it's very colorful then you get bang mortal kombat you know gray colors blood guts yep. being spilled it's like whoa you know that's i think i remember that being more of a of um an extreme reaction from the the, the larger the wider public um grand theft auto not not so much I think. okay interesting interesting the different perception over there okay cool so that's that's kind of the experience with a grand theft auto that that happened in in france which is very different than to definitely how it was, was portrayed in the u.s um yeah, as far as kind of my gaming experience during that time, I, I was starting the same. I was dipping out of video games a little bit. Uh, funny enough, my main memory of that time is the uh, the Nintendo Cube controller, yes. uh, which I find so satisfying to just crunch the buttons. <laughs> it's just the best. I, th- I still think it's the best controller ever invented in terms of like pure like satisfaction. Yes, and I does. still have this 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 idea that I want to buy a bunch of N64, a bunch of um, uh, GameCube controllers, cut off the cords and sell them to kids at, as fidgets. Because you know how like kids need to like have something in their hands when they're in school? I think that'd be the best fidget ever, honestly. It's a, that's a business idea right there. You should uh, maybe look okay. into it and get it done. You can, can get yeah. them pretty cheap right now. Thanks everyone for listening to this episode of Catching Up With The Nerds. We will see you in the next one. Yeah, and tune in to the next episode in the miniseries. And up until then, stay nerdy and catch up with your nerdiness. Take care, guys. Bye.